Good morning. Good morning. I don't know if I have a microphone or not. Let's try this again. All right. Good morning. Christ is risen. Christ is. Now, come on, church. It is Easter. The whole point of being a Christian is for today. Like we celebrate Christmas bigger than we celebrate Easter. But without the resurrection, there is no hope for life after death. Can I get an amen? Amen. So I'm going to say Christ is risen, and I want you to holler Christ is risen indeed, because today he is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. That is how you start an Easter service. Well, my name is Russell. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Russell Powell. I'm the youth director here, and I serve as the liturgist in our service. So you'll see my face uh, quite a bit this morning, so get used to me. Uh, but uh, just uh, wanted to welcome you all to service this morning, extend a special uh, welcome to our guests that are with us. Uh, just a quick word, uh, if you're a guest with us, our closest restrooms are through this door to your left, my right, and kind of snake down the hallway. You'll see them down there uh, as it dead ends. But we are joy, joyed and honored and just excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning to worship a risen Savior on Easter Sunday. So I wanted to welcome you all to church. Now, just a quick point, uh, just one thing to note for today. During our Sunday school hour, we are going to have an Easter egg hunt for the kiddos out on the playground. I'm sure there's some organization to it that I'm not 100% aware of because Miss Lori is handling all the Easter egg stuff. So um, if you need help with that, you can find me or find one of the kids volunteers that'll be kind of hanging around. They'll help you get where you need to be for that Easter egg hunt, uh, but it is gonna be a good Good, good, fun time. Lots of Easter eggs. I'm pretty sure it's going to be all over the playground out there. So kids, I hope you're ready to run and grab some eggs because they got some eggs for you. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to invite you all to rise to your feet and we're going to share together in the affirmation of faith. It's the Apostles' Creed. If you need it, the words are on the screen or you can flip in your hymnal to number 881. But join with me, brothers and sisters. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, 
and new life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning just so full of joy and so full of excitement for the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, it is this day that we celebrate that resurrection, that we as Christians may have life after death, that our tomb is not the final step, just like Jesus' tomb wasn't the final step for him. And God, we know that it is through your son that we are offered the hope of eternal glory once our journey is done here on this earth. But Lord, today as we gather together as one body of Christ, I pray that you allow your spirit to fall on us, to fill us up in our pew, if we're joining on the stream from our car, from our home, wherever we are taking part of this worship, that you fill us up with your Holy Spirit and let us know you're with us. Lord, you give us a great command that we are to go and make disciples. And so, Lord, I pray that this morning we figure out what it is that we need to do to go. What, what, what is needed of us to go. And in each situation that you are there with us, going with us. Lord, we know it's our turn to do that. And I pray that this service is the start of that. That it's our turn to get out of our everyday ruts, to get out of our everyday just normal living and be a change agent for you in this society. Lord, I pray that you hear our prayers and you hear our praise this morning and it is pleasing to you on this Easter Sunday. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll start this morning with Lord, I lift your name on high.
Amen. Thank you, praise team. Uh, all right, kiddos, it is y'all's time to come on down front. Miss Jenna is going to be sharing with you all this morning. So kiddos, I invite you to come on down and join Miss Jenna for children's time. Whoa. Hi guys. Wow, there's a lot of you guys this morning and you all look so nice. Y'all got new haircuts and new clothes. Yeah, y'all look great. Okay. They're your Easter clothes. I love them. All right, here's my question. Here, but why don't you come sit right here by me? Okay. How many of you guys have either gone on an Easter egg hunt or are going to do one today? My, mine was yesterday. <laughs> Yours was yesterday? Today. Today? Mine was, yes, mine was last week. Yesterday. You did two? You got lots of candy, didn't you? Mine was, okay, mine was last week. Yours was last week? What about you, buddy? I have guess what? What? The Easter bunny this morning and the Easter bunny dropped eggs out of a big plank. What? I was, I was with my friend Joseph and we saw the Easter Bunny dropped eggs oh. in a plane. He drove everywhere and and one landed in the water guess what? Someone what? and whoever got the golden one was a paper set egg. Whoever got it got a big prize egg. Mm, did you get it? No. Darn. Do you know what the big prize egg was? I, I don't know. You don't know? You but don't know what the big prize was? Yeah. I think it's a snake. A snake? Oh, no. I had, I saw a snake. You saw a snake? I saw a dead snake a and dead. a real snake. Oof. Okay. All right. Well, let's look at Miss Jenna's I eggs. I like the real snake. All right. Let's I like look. That blue one. You like that blue one? one. Blue's your favorite. Okay. Let's see. What do you think is in this egg? You think it's candy? Starburst. You think it's Starburst? Let's see. Nice. All right. I like it. Shh. All right, y'all listen. <gasps> what is that? It's a cross. It's a cross. It's a cross. It? No, no, no. It's a sword. It's a, it kind of looks like a sword, but it's a cross. What do you think the cross means? It means law about. I know what. Jesus. I know. What, Barrett? Yeah. Hang on, wait. It's about Jesus. No, I'm going to keep this because this goes with part of my egg thing. So the, it does. It means Jesus. It looks like an airplane. It kind of looks like an airplane. Okay. Yep, airplane. So it's a cross. So it means that Jesus died on the cross for us, right? That's why we celebrate Easter. Yes. Yep. Okay. Because he loved us so much. And he died on the cross for well, us. Well, today he, this is the day that he rose from the dead. Okay, still in my thunder. Hang on just a second. Hey, that's a still in my thunder. Okay, hang on. That, that is a big cross up there. Okay, what do you think is in this one? I think it's beans. Jelly beans, you think? Beans. beans. Oh, it's not. Look. Beans. What are those? Can y'all see? Nails. Can y'all see? Hand nails. Hand nails. They're hand nails. Wait a minute. Okay. I know what they they nailed, they, they, they nailed him on in. Jesus' armor. Yeah, and they in the nails are they are they what held Jesus to the cross? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know they did. They nailed him to the cross, but it was actually Jesus' love for every one of us that held him on that cross. Did no, you know that? No. Mm -hmm. It was those. No, Jesus could have gotten down anytime he wanted to. <laughs> yep. Okay. Maybe Go sit down. So everybody can see. No, no, it was um, nailed. Maybe, actually nailed. Maybe, it was the upside down. It was nailed through his hands. Okay. All right. What do you think is in this one? What do you think is in this one? I'm losing control quickly. What do you think is in this one? Okay, I don't know. What? What? It's a blanket. A blanket? It's a shield. It's a shield. It's a shield? Well, okay. What is that? A rock. It's a rock. Why do I have a rock? Well, hey, I saw it. I have not rocks in my rock. I have no idea. I have no idea. What did they put over the stone? When oh, they yeah. put over the stone, it was a big, it wasn't this small. It was a big one, and they put it over about, where? About. Is where they put Jesus, right? They put him in the tomb, and then they rolled this big rock, right? I have no idea how big that was. Yeah, well, it, was, it was big, I promise. Or a tall. It fit in the tomb. Oh, it was right Okay. Well, All right, last one. 
What about? It's not making a noise. Why? Wow. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in this one? Why do I have an empty egg? Empty tomb. Because of the empty tomb. You're right. But what did you tell me earlier? Jesus is what? Well, Not invisible, guys. He rose from the dead. Oh, from the dead. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I don't really understand. So. Okay. Let's say a prayer real quick. Okay. He's yep. Go. Yep. Okay. Y'all ready? Okay. Let's pray. All right. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for each and every one of these sweet children, and I just ask that you be with them and that you help them always to remember that you are with them and that you will always be with them. And in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all go sit down. Amen. Uh, church, y'all tell me something that's more exciting than watching the altar full of children during children's time at Easter. Thank you, Miss Jenna. That was awesome. I think all the kids have had enough sugar this morning, so just let them hunt the eggs, then take them home. <laughs> if you want to grab the Bible from the pew in front of you, if you have yours, go ahead and pull it out. I'll give you a second to flip it open. We'll be reading from Matthew chapter 28. We're going to cover verses 1 through 10 this morning in our service. So again, that's Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Miss Rachel, uh, my wife, when she was a children's director, gave me the best uh, advice ever. If you cut your Bible in half and then split it in half again, that should get you pretty close. <laughs> Hear now the word of God. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and that they will see me there. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Somebody next to you and tell them, I'm glad you're here. Find another person and tell them the same thing. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Not have to stretch you. And let them know that you're glad that they are here. Uh, for those of us that are worshiping virtually, I hope you'll, you'll give a shout out, a fist bump, a thumbs up um, to, to three people, uh, three nods and three mentions, I think they call it, uh, somewhere uh, in your comments to let somebody know uh, that you're glad that they are here. I, I wonder uh, if, if many of us in this room know where we were uh, I'll say last Friday, but I don't mean the one two days ago. How about Friday a week ago? Does anybody know where you were? If you're online, even put a hand up. You know where you were a week ago Friday? Come on now, there ought to be a few more hands than that. A week ago Friday. 
Somebody tell me where you were a week ago Friday. We played this game on September 11th once. Where were you a week ago Friday? Anybody? Shout it out. At Branson with our youth group. That's right. Who, who else? Shout a couple more out. Mark? Okay. I would, that's, it's like a good setup. You were standing in your driveway. Holly Ann, where were you? Do you remember? Were you at school last Friday? Do you remember where you were? Were you at school? Did, did they have a, a tornado drill at school? Did everybody have to go in the hallway or the cafeteria, go somewhere? Say, you got to love Mark. There, there's, a, there's always one of us good rednecks somewhere. Standing in my driveway waiting for the tornado, he said. <laughs> Standing in my driveway waiting for the tornado. You know, tornadoes these days come with a warning, right? I remember that, that I heard the siren go off um, and being the cheapskate that I am, uh, I run up here to the church to take the flag down. Uh, many weeks ago, we had a terrible windstorm, and it, and it really r- almost raptured our flag. Um, it, it really beat it and, and broke it. It was tattered and torn, and so uh, that flag, along with some others that we have recently uh, received, will, will soon be retired in a proper ceremony. Uh, but I had run outside when I heard the sirens go off, because I thought, I don't want that flag to get beat or blown about in the yard in the storm, and I, I confess, I didn't fold it quite proper. It was a one-man folding routine. Aaron, uh, I didn't have a, a proper folding, but uh, I remember uh, then seeking some shelter like they tell you uh, to do. Earthquakes, however, don't come with a warning, do they? And hurricanes, uh, nowadays they do. They start telling you like a countdown. You need, to, you need to pack up and get on. And some people say, well, I'm going to stand in my driveway and, you know, put some plywood up, get my lawn chair out, and, we're, you know, here we go, uh, to, to each his own. Um, but earthquakes come without any warning, they tell me. They just happen. Um, I, I can't say that I survived an earthquake, but some years ago um, when we were living in the Ozarks, um, there was a little tremble at the church, and I remember thinking, oh, somebody, you know, run into a telephone pole outside? What, what has happened? And, and it was explained to me that the, that the uh, fault lines, I guess, in Missouri had, had done as they do, the tectonics had, had done as they do, and, and there was a little rumble and a shake. There was a shock and an, and an aftershock um, here in the Ozarks. I was visiting with um, uh, one of our uh, faithful members and leaders in the life of our church, though, this week, and, and, and asking her some uh, about her experience of, of earthquakes, having been uh, born and raised and lived a, a good part of her life in, in California. And she was telling me about uh, the big uh, earthquake of 1989. Um, I remember, I think I was in like junior high, and I remember watching the World Series, right? Um, and, and watching it on TV. I think it was maybe Al Michaels was calling the game, and the, and the bridge in San Francisco, part of it collapsed. Um, um, but she was telling me, uh, as I was curious to hear some about her experiences of earthquakes, of, of the shock and the aftershock of an earthquake. Um, and she described the way that, that in an earthquake, um, that things um, move to the edges, that, that things start shaking and and rattling, and, and before long, they're, they're rolling. That, that in an office building even, that, that the desks and the chairs will, will be moved towards the, the outer walls and the windows. That, that in people's homes as well, the, you know, the kitchen table will be kind of making its way for cover towards the, the refrigerator or, or the outside wall. That things have a way of working themselves um, outside. We tell again the great story of Easter this day, of the way that the world did everything that it could to harm Jesus, to reject Him, um, to abuse Him, uh, to crucify Him, and, and even uh, to kill Him. And we see that, that in the story of Easter, there are two great earthquakes, The earthquake of Good Friday and the shaking and the breaking. We see uh, the breaking and and shaking of hearts of Mary, the mother of Jesus, of Magdalene, of of Siloam, of of the beloved disciple and and Peter and and the other faithful followers of Jesus. 
And we see that, that in this moment uh, of quaking um, and heartbreaking and shaking, that, that there are some uh, that, that are sort of working their way to the outsides. We note that not everyone was at the cross at the foot of Jesus. That some had denied him or betrayed him um, and, and made their way away from, from trouble as human beings sometimes uh, do. We see that, that as uh, the story of Easter is told even this day, um, that, that in the dark of night and in the long of the Easter uh, weekend, that, that there were many who had uh, gone away, gone away to, to the edges. Some of them, the Bible tells us, were so afraid of, of what might befall or happen uh, even to them that they withdrew from the place of the cross further and, and further away. That, that some of them, uh, as we sometimes do in times of trouble, went back to the only thing that they knew. There were some who went back to fishing. There were others in their fear. The Bible tells us that they were locked away. That they put themselves in a room and closed the door in order to keep uh, everyone out. The world tried to shut down the, the ministry and life and teachings and spirit and power of Jesus. As the Gospel of John tells us, the world was in darkness, but God sent His Son to be the light of the world, and yet many reject Him and sought to snuff out the light of God. The world in all of its darkness tried to deny the very light of Jesus Christ, of His power over even all things of the creation, over sin and death and the message of hope of salvation. The world tried to shut Jesus in as Miss Jenna taught us in a tomb behind a large stone. And the world thought uh, for a moment that it won. The cross, you see, was the symbol of death. Not to be messed with was the state. And that stone and the seal upon it was the symbol of all things done. I wondered some about Pilate after he washed his hands and, and the Pharisees to the guards, even when they placed the seal upon the stone at the door of the tomb. And the thought maybe that they said, well, that's that. All done. All through, as the auctioneer even says, all done and and all through. I wondered about some of those faithful followers too. Who had hope beyond hope at least for a while and for many of their days. Who perhaps for a moment maybe though thought to themselves. Well we, we had a good run right? It was fun while it lasted but, but we have to right, face the facts don't we? Um, that it just couldn't be. Sometimes in, in our darkest moments, it's easy um, to become overwhelmed even with our sense of despair. Perhaps even this Easter weekend, some of us maybe have, have gotten in touch um, with our grief again. Remembering uh, loved ones that we've lost maybe in the last year or two or three. And thinking more about the sense of the faithful followers of Jesus who loved and served him and their deep uh, sense of grief. The Bible tells us, and I was reading the Psalms um, some this week in the aftermath of the events of, of Friday a week ago. The Bible reminds us that, that our God has been our help in, in ages past, right? I, I was reading uh, from the Psalms, in, in fact, uh, flipping around a bit back and forth, and, and I was struck in reading um, from the 46th Psalm uh, this week. I want to lift just a couple of verses uh, from the psalmist for, for your ears to hear, for your eyes to see. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help, uh, ever help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble to the sea. So let the oceans roar and let the mountains tremble when the waters surge. Amen? The angel said to the women um, in the aftershock of the shock of the earthquake, not to be afraid. And when they took uh, 
him at his word and, and went to tell others that Jesus had risen. And their aftershock too, when they first even uh, then encountered the risen Lord, and their, and their aftershock, Jesus as well told them uh, to fear not, and they, and they uh, worshipped him there. The scripture tells us about the shocks and the aftershocks, about the, the earthquakes and the face quakes of the e- faith quakes. I sound like Mike Tython, Happy Ita, uh, of the Ita story. Um, it, it tells us about those who arose early as the women did and went to the tomb uh, to worship and to grieve. And yet soon the the service of a memorial that they thought they were going to became a service of, of celebration, of, of new life. The same that we too at times gather uh, to remember those that we grieve and to celebrate uh, new life. The scripture describes for us, uh, the gospel of John tells us uh, of the disciples who came just after the women. Of the beloved disciple and, and Peter who maybe got up a little late. Um, you, you might uh, uh, know somebody perhaps who got up a little late today. There may have been, you know, uh, some, some, some conflict uh, about getting out the door. Somebody was looking for those certain shoes that they had to have or, or maybe wasn't uh, clear about where they remembered where the keys last were, right? Um, maybe the alarm seemed uh, a little early like it sometimes does in spring. But, but in any case, the Scripture tells us about the way that they went to see what had happened and that they came running. I'm not sure that I remember if it's the beloved that, that first gets to the scene and then Peter sort of rushes past him uh, to the tomb. The Scripture, again, tells us about those that, that when this earthquake had happened, that they had already gone back to, to sort of business as usual, to the things that they knew and trusted, that the earthquakes and shakes and, and, and faith and struggle uh, of Good Friday was more than enough that they decided to, to, to withdraw fr- from the cross. There were those that were even locked away late uh, in the day as evening came before Jesus walked through their locked doors and walls and passed their fears and trembles to give them again faith and saying in the midst of chaos and uncertainty, peace uh, be with you. Somebody that you know this morning has been through uh, a few things. Somebody that, that maybe even is sitting been, uh, by you has been through a few things. You, you might even just look around, I dare you, just to, just to kind of look around and, and, and take notice that there's some people here that have been shook There's some people here this morning. There's some people worshiping with us virtually that have been shook. There's someone probably just within an arm's reach or maybe a stretch or a step in a stretch that knows what it's like to be shaken. There there are some people in this room who know the feeling of earthquakes and, and aftershakes about the shaking and the breaking that happens in, a, in an event, um, in a crisis, and in a struggle. There are some people in our midst who, who know the aftershocks of those events too, of the difficulty of carrying on and moving forward as the first followers of Jesus tried so faithfully to begin to do. There are some people here that have been few through a few things. Some people who have carried on despite the wayward things. There are some people that, that in one hand had a lot of trouble and then, and then the other some more too. And they took those things and laid them at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him and continued as the Bible instructed them to do, to go on. We can read the great story of Easter and the way that they responded. The faithful few in telling uh, the story of Jesus who overcame even the grave. We can read of their travels here and there and everywhere of the way that they soon even began to make plans to carry this great message of salvation to the whole world. Past storm and shipwreck and Henry, even snakes too. 
You can read about it in the book of Acts. You know, Paul, if storms and shipwrecks weren't enough, maybe he had to be snake bit too. And still, uh, they carried the message of Jesus to a hurting and broken and shook world. Perhaps in the last week of your life, you might have been shaken by what you saw uh, on the screen. I confess, I'm not as tough as this gal uh, on the interweb that had her phone out over in Little Rock last Friday. I mean, as soon as I got the flag down, I fired up that truck and I went and hid, right? Waited for somebody from Channel 7 to tell me when it was going to be okay. But I saw this uh, video from somebody's phone. Uh, It's probably somebody Mark knows. (laughs) This gal said on the video... I'm going to get this. Something like, did y'all see this? She said, I'm going to get it. And I, you know, swung the door open and said, I'm going to get it. And, and you know, and then I, I feel like she maybe got sucked out the door. Right? And somebody grabbed her and like pulled her back in and the whole place uh, went apart. Said, I'm going to get it. And the, the whole place come apart. Last week, uh, you may have been in the car rider line. Or at work. Or maybe it was on the way to, to pick up kids from after school or daycare or nanas or poppies or, or waiting on Nene to bring the bus with the kids home. And maybe just for a moment, you thought about all those families in Tennessee and the children that were gone from this earth. I wonder if you saw, though, the footage last Sunday of the Covenant Presbyterian Church in Nashville singing the doxology together and singing to the glory of God. The psalmist tells us that the day and the night that the Lord is Lord of both. Amen? The day and the night. Um, that, that yes, the Lord is the Lord, woo, of pink shirts and, and candy eggs and an airplane. And thank you, Henry. I made the mistake of telling Henry, sometimes we don't see as much candy at Easter because the Easter bunny doesn't have a sleigh. But Henry said he can bring more candy because he's got an airplane and he saw it happen yesterday, right? <laughs> candy falling out of an airplane. So uh, I, I didn't realize. Uh, th- there are moments, though, when we feel the, the Son of God uh, uh, in our hearts and we, and we can feel the sun even on our faces. You know, yesterday afternoon was a, a glorious time for just a bit, right? There are those moments and maybe sunsets too. The, the God, God has painted the sky so beautifully the last week. Uh, night after night I've sought for it at the end of the day. Of all the calamity, of all our politics and all our problems in this country and the world... Uh, to see the painted sky and to know that God is still on His throne. And, and to wake up like I did last Saturday after the tornado and, and to know that the sun still rises. The psalmist tells us in the 146th Psalm that, that we sometimes hide uh, in darkness. And that we are afraid. But that God is, is God of the night uh, and the day. And so we know that God who is at work in in rolling stones and in shaking the earth, that God is also God in the rising of the morning sun. A reminder that God who has created everything is the God of everything and everyone. And that He, as the psalmist said, is ever-present in our times of trouble, in ages past. That we should not fear even the trembling of the mountain or the roaring of the seas. In the Bible, the the Scriptures tell us uh, that the Lord is the Lord of everything. And so today, as surely as the sun uh, rises, I want to suggest to you, That the story of Easter, uh, told first long ago, is told today and tomorrow by you and me. 
The story was once carried from the tomb by Mary, the mother of Jesus, by Magdalene and Salome, by the disciple who loved Jesus, and Peter and James and John, by Thomas who once doubted for a moment as we all do. And now, dear friends, the telling of the story the living of the message, the sharing of the gospel, the good news, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is up to me and, and to you. And so hear now um, the words from Colossians as we remember the supremacy of Jesus Christ, uh, the King. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all. For through Him God has made the heavenly realms and the earth. He made the things we can see and those that we can't. Thrones and kingdoms and rulers and authorities and even the unseen world. Everything was created through Him and for Him. He existed before it all, and He holds all of creation together. Christ is the head of the church, His body and His bride. He is the beginning and supreme over all who will rise from the dead. And so He is first in everything. For God in all His fullness was pleased to live and dwell in Christ and through Him, that God reconciled everything to Himself. And He made peace with everything in heaven and on the earth by the blood of Christ on the cross. Christ has risen uh, indeed. I want you to, to take one more look at your neighbors, knowing that some have been shook, right? Right? And remember what we said in the beginning, we're glad that you're here. Because whatever shook you and stirred you and tried to break you couldn't. Because Christ, the King, is in you and me. May we bow our heads. God, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, our Righteousness, and our life. We pray and give thanks for the beauty of the earth that we, uh, that we enjoy this Easter Sunday morning and today. We thank you for the gift of spring and we see flowers perhaps on doorposts and even gravesides and we remember the gift of eternal life. Maybe too we look at the old pictures, the Polaroids, or even visit to the grave with fresh flowers and in granite we see the names of those who have gone on before us in faith. We remember the words of their witness, our disciples of old, the ones who dragged us to church, to summer camp in the lake. And Lord, we know that it's our turn now. That we're the people who will rebuild Little Rock in central Arkansas. That we're the people who will pray over our schools and grieve in the places where lives are lost. We'll pray for our country in her feeble days. In the midst of political strife and recklessness, we'll pray for our first responders and soldiers and sailors and airmen. We'll pray for the good news of Jesus and the peacekeeping of the whole earth. Because it's our turn now. Lord, we will take up the message of the cross. Not of death, but of life. And not of storms but of peace, because it's our turn now. As we try to live uh, in faith, we will pray the same prayer which you taught to those first followers from the tomb to live. And so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, if you're guests in worship today here with friends or family, we want to invite you um, uh, not to, to share a tithe or an offering here, that your presence is your gift. Um, if you would like to make a gift, though, to the, to the recovery efforts of the tornado um, in Little Rock, um, if you'll just mark on the envelope or your check missions, uh, we'll see that it gets there. If you're an electronic giver and, and want to give to the mission of the uh, emergency response team in Little Rock, um, if you just mark on the Tithely app, there's a place where it says missions. Um, all gifts will be given uh, through the, the United Methodist uh, emergency response teams this week. Uh, if you've got a joy or a concern that you want to share, we invite you as you're worshiping with us virtually just to comment, to lift up praises and concerns uh, in the stream. If you've got a confidential uh, concern or care, just direct messages uh, that we'll share with you. I want to invite us all, if you will, to, to tear off that little connect card from, from your bulletin if you grabbed one. Um, to make a mark of your presence. Um, if you've got a, a question uh, about the life of the church, to make a mark. Uh, on the other side is a prayer card. And again, invite you to, to lift prayers and praises. Um, you may be like Kate um, and got a nice turkey this weekend and, and you want to give a whoop whoop, um, mark it on the card. Um, somebody that you have a care for to mark it on the card. There's a place where you can mark and we'll share uh, the, the request with our prayer wall and in our bulletin for next week. Um, if your uh, request is one to be held in confidence by, by your heart and mine, if you mark confidential, um, the ushers will see uh, that I receive your card uh, to pray with you and for you in the need. Uh, if you need a follow-up for me or Russell or any of the staff, uh, just make a mark uh, on there or, or write their name and we'll be sure um, to get you in, in touch. Um, just as I call uh, the yesters forward, though, uh, let me ask you, do you know what the Easter Bunny said uh, before he eats, sits down to eat? Anybody know what he says? Do you know what the Easter Bunny says before he sits down to eat? Huh? He says, let us. And then he says, pray. So let us pray. That one will get you later on the way home when you're having salad. <laughs> Salad's good for you, Carrots. Um, let's bow our heads. God, we give you thanks for this day, uh, for the gift of Easter, for the joy of Easter, uh, for love o over vengeance, for, for peace over chaos, uh, for your presence uh, in the aftermath and the aftershocks of all of life. Uh, and for the hope of glory, we pray. Bless the offerings that we bring and share uh, for our church uh, and for, for those um, victims and families um, from the tornado. Uh, bless the prayers which we lift and share, the joys and concerns which we bring. Uh, God, knowing that you are at work in the day and in the night, uh, in the storms, in the moments before and after, and always we pray uh, in Jesus' name. Amen.
song, My Tribute. Oh 
Amen and amen. Thank you again for joining our Easter Sunday worship service this morning. Just a quick note, families, if you're going to be part of our Easter egg hunt, Miss Lori has asked you to just hang out in the sanctuary for a little while. Uh, that way they can kind of organize it from here. There's enough space in here uh, to hold all the families and everything. So Easter eggers, stay in here. Everyone else, you're good to go to Sunday school after this. Uh, and I just want to leave you all with a little bit of encouragement that if you might have been quaking and shaking at some point in your life, uh, no matter what that is, it's brought you here with us today. And we are so thankful and so joyed that you joined us in service this morning uh, for Easter Sunday. And I want to encourage you as you're quaking and shaking, reach out to somebody for some support. Reach out to someone for some prayers. Uh, the church is here. Justin's here. I'm here for you. We'll be happy to pray with you and for you in anything you're doing. But I also want to encourage you that that quaking and shaking can be laid at the foot of the cross, which is a symbol of life now that Jesus has been resurrected. So to God be the glory today and forever. Amen.